This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and today we're going to talk about things no one's telling you about Dying Light 2. Let's get to it. The first thing we're going to talk about is inventory and stash space limits. Yes, your personal stash does have a limit on things that it can hold. You can see here, I'm trying to put more armor in and it is not accepting more armor. Your inventory has some space limits as well that it doesn't just come out and tell you. If you take a look here, I'm trying to pick up more arrows and I cannot pick up more arrows. There is a limit to the amount amount of ammunition that you can carry. I've also run into situations where I was out and about and I could not pick up any more vendor trash. I don't know what happened there, but my inventory had hit a capacity or a situation where it just stopped me from picking up anything at all. So just something to keep in mind, watch your inventory closely, make sure that you keep it trimmed down and keep your stash trimmed down as well. You cannot be a hoarder in Dying Light 2. The next one is the map changes a lot as you progress through the game and as you make different choices, you can influence your map in ways that can lock you out of areas completely. And I'm about to give an example that will contain some spoilers, so if you do not want those, skip to the timestamp on the screen. So I've been choosing the peacekeepers through my entire playthrough, just siding with them 100%. And in doing so, I have completely shut myself out of the bazaar. I go back there. There is no one there. It's just remnants of what it used to be. I also had a mission where I captured a bandit camp for the survivor faction and it is now owned by the peacekeepers as well, which changed some of the layout around that area as well as the vendor that was there. Also, because I'm now locked out of the bazaar, I cannot complete a, one of the quests that I had there. I'm completely locked out of that quest. It still shows up on my map that it's there, but I cannot complete it because the lady nor her children are there anymore. So something you should keep in mind before you go making any big game changing decisions or map changing decisions is that you should complete all of the quests in said area before you do so that you want to complete because otherwise you may not be able to complete those quests later on. This is a really neat mechanic and I actually really like the mechanic. I like how the map evolves with your character as your character evolves and as the story evolves. It's really cool. It's a really neat mechanic, but it's also something you need to keep in mind that happens and be aware of it so that you can make sure you don't get locked out of areas you don't want to get locked out of or make sure that you can still complete quests that you maybe wanted to complete and thought, oh, I'll come back to it later. The next thing nobody is talking about, and I haven't seen in a single Tibbs video or anything, is that the gear that has a reduction to parkour stamina use on it affects the amount of stamina that is drained from using your glider. Using your glider is considered a parkour activity. So as you can see in these video clips, I jumped and I sailed from the same spot in both locations and landed relatively in the same exact spot. And in both of these clips, you can see a large difference in the amount of stamina use. I had an almost 50% reduction in stamina use for parkour activities on the armor that I was wearing. It was like 48 something percent. And you can clearly see that there is a big difference in the amount of stamina I used here. This is actually really huge because this means with enough reduction, you could easily double or triple your glide time, helping you to get around the map a lot faster and a lot easier. So even if you don't wear the armor all the time because you don't like it, it could be a good idea to have a set of armor on you specifically for long gliding periods. You could just just swap to it real quick, jump off the edge of a building, glide to your next location, swap back to whatever combat armor you are using. Because while there is fast travel locations, you still have to frequently glide out or run to other locations that aren't anywhere close to those fast travel locations. That's not the only fun interaction that comes with armor bonuses. The other one is that the ranged damage bonus that you get from the ranged 
Ranger gear also affects your thrown damage items. So for example, the Molotovs and the Knives also benefit from this increase in damage that you get for ranged weapons on the Ranger gear. Now, I know that this is something that may have been like a duh fire spark moment here, but these things aren't classified in the game as weapons. They're classified as accessories. So one would think that when the armor says ranged weapons, that that would just include the bows and the crossbow. So I wanted to make sure that the game did classify these accessories as ranged weapons, and sure enough, it does. So if it deals damage and it's a thrown item, it does get a bonus from the ranger set. Next up, let's talk about enemy respawn and range because this can be exploited and used really easily to target farm specific things like rare or unique trophies. So I figured out on stream the other day that after you get a specific distance away from a convoy that the things there at the military convoy would respawn and I was using this to target farm rare trophies. Well, my good buddy Hosav took this a bit further for me and actually figured out the exact range and the exact range is 100 meters. So all you have to do is mark a location and then run 100 meters from it on the map. So just look up at your compass when you're 100 meters away, exactly 100 meters. Uh, then you can just run back to it and everything that was there will be respawned. This works anywhere on the map. You can use it to target farm pretty much whatever you want to farm. I like to use this on the military convoys to farm the goons as they drop a rare trophy every single time and the volatiles in the GRE buildings. So you can go to the GRE buildings. There's usually one or two volatiles right there at the doorway. If you go during the daytime, you can shoot them pretty easily from the door with explosive arrows and kill them pretty quickly. Sometimes they'll be lined up in a way that you can get headshots will always be on the second level and you can just sneak down there, kill them instantly with a headshot. And it's a quick, easy way to farm unique and rare trophies. The next thing I don't see literally anybody talking about, and I cannot understand why when I've heard so many people losing progress because of their save file getting corrupted for whatever reason, is backing up your save files. Back up your save files so you can find your save files in your main Steam install folder in the path that you see here on the screen right now. So wherever you have Steam installed, you go to that folder, follow the rest of these here with these folders with the weird numbers or whatever and go to that and you will find your save game location and then you can just pull those out and copy and paste that file to someplace else back it up please back up your save files especially if you are playing multiplayer it is a really easy to corrupt your save files if you are playing multiplayer and last but not least this one this is another one that i'm like how has nobody that I've seen at all mentioned this one? So as you know, pretty much all of the loot respawns in the location that it's at, unless you do something to change that location as we spoke about earlier on in the video. These large bandit camps where you go and you take over the camp have an absolute crap load of good loot in them. Everything from Molotovs to throwing knives to tons of arrows, they're just jam packed full of weapons and everything else. If you take them over like it, the game wants you to do, you lose all of that loot. So don't do it. I'm already mad that I've taken over two of them before I realized that this was a thing. If you don't take them over, you can continuously farm them over and over and over again because all of the enemies, except for the bosses, the bosses there for some reason, once you kill them, will not respawn no matter what, but that's okay because they don't really drop great loot anyway. All of the other loot in there, even the loot that's just setting around on the floor, respawns. So don't take over the bandit camps. Completely ignore the that whole mechanic and just kill the guys that are in there and loot them. And it doesn't take long for the stuff to respawn. For everything else, it's about 20-ish minutes or so. I haven't timed it exactly, but I can guarantee you the loot in them respawns and they are a freaking treasure trove of goodies. All right, and that's pretty much all I have for you for this one. Was there anything in here that you already knew about? 
Did you learn anything from the video? Let me know down in the comment section. I'm eager to hear what you all have to think about these things that I really haven't heard anybody mention. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful and informational, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And I want to give an absolutely massive thank you to my supporters on Patreon for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my Lee Crow Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit the thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.